Many in the advanced nuclear industry claim they're on a clear path to achieving the goals made during the atomic age, that is, clean and abundant energy for all. While many have failed to achieve this vision, one company may soon demonstrate that they have the balls to make it happen. And when I say balls, I mean these bad boys. More on that on today's episode. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again, and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host, Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed today's episode, leave a comment below. This allows us to gain favor with our mighty YouTube overlords so that we can reach out to as many of you as we can. Back in October, the U.S. Department of Energy announced two winners for its Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program also referred to as the ARDP. They provided $160 million in initial funding to build two advanced nuclear reactors that can be operational within the next seven years. The ARDP is designed to help the private sector demonstrate advanced nuclear reactors in the United States. One of those companies was TerraPower, receiving half of those funds to develop the Natrium Reactor concept. I went into a fair amount of detail in an episode we released a few weeks back. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out by clicking in the link in the description. Now, the other company that received DOE funds is called X Energy, a private nuclear reactor and fuel design engineering company based in Maryland, with a radically different approach than their co awardee. Rather than looking at liquid coolants or other conventional approaches to achieving fission, they are looking to construct a high temperature gas cool pebble bed reactor called the XE100. It's designed to be scalable and is small enough to be road transportable. This small modular reactor will be capable of generating 80 megawatts of power for small scale applications like powering remote villages, military outposts, and scientific encampments. It can also be grouped with three other XE100 reactors to generate 320 megawatts for utility scale power. Additionally, because the reactors would operate at high temperatures, they have the potential to be used for on-site industrial process applications. So excess waste heat can be used for water desalinization or even synthetic fuel production. And with its ability to load follow, it can potentially integrate very well with intermittent renewables like wind and solar. Now, Pebble bed reactors use tristructural isotopic particle fuel or triso fuel for short. They are roughly the size of a tennis ball and consist of uranium dioxide, as well as several layers of carbon and fireproof silicon carbide material. This protects the fuel and allows it to operate under high temperature conditions with little to no chance of meltdown. The reactor is comprised of thousands of these pebbles to create a reactor core and are cooled by inert helium gas that does not react chemically with the fuel elements. This design offers many advantages. In terms of operations, the plant is expected to be operational for 60 years and achieve a capacity factor of around 95%, primarily because the fuel replacement of the reactor is continuous. Instead of shutting down for weeks to replace fuel rods, pebbles are placed in a bin-shaped reactor. A pebble is recycled from the bottom to the top about 10 times over a few years and tested each time it is removed when it is expended. It is removed as spent fuel and a new pebble is inserted. The primary benefit to helium gas coolant is that it has no phase change. It starts as a gas and remains as a gas. Similarly, the moderator is solid carbon. It does not move or have phase transitions as the light water does in conventional reactors. Convection of the gas driven by the heat of the pebbles ensures that the pebbles are passively cooled. The concept is very well understood, and while it may not have been an MSR, it does offer a lot of similar benefits. High temperature operations with passive safety features. The reactor can be relatively compact to ensure not only scalability, but large scale assembly to take advantage of the economies of scale. These can be mass produced in a factory shipped to the site via road or rail infrastructure, which in turn reduces construction time considerably. This isn't the first instance of the U.S. government taking notice of X Energy. In 2016, they were awarded $53 million from the Department of Energy's Advanced Reactor Concept Cooperative Agreement Award to advance elements of their reactor. In 2019, they received further funding from the Department of Defense to explore the possibility of developing small military reactors for use in forward outposts 
and military facilities. Now, it's important to note that the reason why the reactor is getting so much support is that there have been a lot of research and development on gas-cooled reactors by both the private sector and our national labs. The concept was originally thought up by Oak Ridge scientists back in the 1940s, but has been in use going as far back as the 1960s. There was the Dragon Reactor in the United Kingdom, the AVR concept in Germany, which later evolved into the TH300 reactor, a thorium breeder which operated in the 1980s. Commercially, the Chinese have a 10 megawatt prototype called the HRT-10 and are looking to scale to larger versions for commercial development. X-Energy has several things that still need to be worked out in order for this to be commercially viable, such as supply chain constraints. After all, to ensure long-term use at these facilities, they are looking to use high-assay, low-enriched uranium for the Triso fuel pebbles. To address these issues, X-Energy plans on operating their own fuel fabrication and production facility. By doing this, X-Energy will be able to ensure their supply while improving quality and reducing costs. This will be America's first commercial Triso facility and will provide this fuel at a fraction of the cost of conventional suppliers. There's quite a lot that still needs to be discussed, but I won't end it here. As the company and the Department of Energy continue to work towards developing this technology, I will be providing updates on X Energy's progress. To keep up with industrial progress, subscribe and stay tuned to new episodes in the coming weeks. Thank you for watching today's episode. I'm Sean Kenny, and this was Rock Logic.